Hi guys, it's Daniel. Welcome to Studio Wildlife. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint this black leopard. So I'm starting with acrylic paints, just using some white, some black and some sap green. And I'm just mixing them with some water, just to thin them out a little bit, and then spraying some water over the top with a spray bottle. This is just to create an almost abstract and interesting background for me to paint over the top of. I start with grey and then add a little bit of green over the top once that first layer has dried. I'm just trying to create abstract colours and marks by then using a toothbrush just to splatter some paint over that canvas. I'm actually painting on a wooden panel that I've cut and primed myself using gesso. If you want to learn more about using gesso, check out my previous video. I actually traced my drawing on first and then I started to refine that drawing using some vine charcoal, which is what you can see that I'm doing here. So I'm just using a stick of fine charcoal just to find all the dark areas and the shadowy areas of my lip. I then use a blending stump just to knock that back a little bit and then work over the top of that a little bit more with more vine charcoal just to really really emphasise those darker areas, those really really shadowy areas. Once that's done I use a putty eraser or a putty rubber to pull away the charcoal from the surface of the wooden panel to almost give details and the texture and the highlights of the fur. Because I've used that acrylic base it will never go back to full white. Once that's done I like to use this charcoal pouch and just spread charcoal powder around the canvas and then spray it with acetone to create these abstract splash effects. Once that's dry, the acetone almost fixes that canvas, or fixes that charcoal to the canvas, so I work over the top again with more vine charcoal. Just building up those darker layers once more. I do this with a variety of sizes of charcoal to make the piece more interesting. Once that's done, I use some compressed charcoal and my finger to blend it to really get some dark black areas to this section. I then use a 2B charcoal pencil to start blocking in some of the darker detailed fur. This I can use in two ways, with the point, or I can hold the pencil at the side to create thicker marks and cover areas much quicker, which is what you can see that I'm doing here. I just repeat this process again using the point of the pencil for the details and the side of the pencil to do the shading and the blocking in those darker shapes. This process is probably the part that takes the longest but it is quite fun and enjoyable still. Next I'm using a variety of pastel pencils, all different greys and whites, to add some detailed fur over the top of my black underpainting. I have sealed the painting first using a fixative and then I'm working with the pastels over the top. I'm just building those layers of pastels, working with my darker greys first and then building over the top of them with the lighter white pastel just to establish those highlights and that detailed fur. For the slightly darker areas I'm just pressing a little more gently and for the brighter areas I'm pressing down with my pastel pencil a bit harder. I just continue this process building up those pastel layers over the top of my charcoal and acrylic underpainting until I'm happy with how it looks. I probably went a little bit overboard with this layer and didn't need to do as much detail because the next step a lot of this detail is actually going to be lost. I spray the pastel with fixative and that actually removes a lot of the colours. So I now need to build that detail back up with paint. To paint over this surface, I first spray the drawing with pastel fixative and then once that's dry, spray it with a layer of glossy or matte varnish to really seal that picture ready for painting. 
I then just use a small detail brush and all I'm using here is pure white paint, just watering it down when I want it a little bit lighter and using solid white paint when I want it a bit brighter and that's pretty much it. Just building up those layers on top of my previous drawing. I use my favourite brush quite a lot in this piece for the whiskers. This is the Pro Art Sword Liner. If you haven't got one, I really recommend getting one. They're great for whiskers and long, thin fur. I decided I wanted to add some colour to this piece, so I thought I would add some colour to the eyes. So just like with all my eyes, I started off by adding black, and then adding some darker base colours to the iris. Then building up layers of colour, starting with greens, because I wanted the green to tie in with the background of this painting. And I just build up brighter and brighter colours, and more saturated colours, over the top of those darker colours that were part of the first layer. I use a lot of glazing techniques here to do thin transparent washes to give the indication of reflections, then I like to add a lot of blue to my highlights to indicate the reflections of the sky. I then use pure white for those final highlights to really make the eye pop. Here you can see the whole process of the other eye being sped up. This is about 3,000 times speed. The whole process of painting this eye probably took around 20 minutes or so, adding all of that colour. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. It does mean so much to myself and to my partner, Amber. And if you've got any requests for what you'd like to see next, please just drop a comment below. Here's the finished piece. This was actually part of a three piece set. You've already seen the tiger drawing, but there's also a cheetah, which I'll upload next week. As always, thank you so much for watching. And for more wildlife art tips, please head on over to studiowildlife.com.